Welcome to the Fifth Trooper Podcast. Hello and welcome back to the Fifth Trooper Podcast. It's been a while, but we're back. And uh, on this special occasion, Evan and I decided to talk to the boys from the Canto Bite uh, tournament coming up in February because they're doing it very close to our hometown. So this is a big tournament, very close to home. So we thought we'd do an entire episode about it uh, because that's fun. Right, Evan? Yeah. Sorry, I'm trying to like, (laughs) my cats are old and they scream. So I've been trying to like mute mute when i'm not talking so you don't hear grumpy old cats walk in so yeah. if i don't if you see me talking and not just you shoot me a flare that i'm, I'm all, right. Muted. all right only professional quality here <laughs> but, uh, hey do you want cat screams or not like this yeah is, i don't care this is, this is what it is cat screams are fine with me uh but we have chris and dave joining us uh they are the uh the guys putting on the to's putting on the canto bite that is going to be up here in uh, upstate New York in at the Verona, the, the uh, Turning Stone Casino. Uh, remind me of the dates again, 19th and 20th. Is that right? Yep, that's correct. February 19th and 20th. Uh, still still open seats. So if people wanted to join, they could they could still sign up. Yes. Just a couple. Just, Just a couple. Say, say oh, we're getting, we're getting she close. says we got uh, we got 45 people signed up. Oh, nice. So that leaves us, what, 19? 19 more slots here. All right. Well, you heard yeah, them. Yeah. 19 more slots. Do it right now. Don't even listen to the rest of this podcast. Just stop and go sign up and come play Evan and I, because we will both be there playing our hearts out. Uh, so, yeah. So why don't you guys uh, give us a little primer about, uh, you know, why did, why, why, why are you putting on the Canto bite? Why are you doing this? Uh, so what happened was, is, uh, we used to play Warhammer fantasy back in the day and we used to do the GT circuit there and we were like big into it, going to every event uh, we could from like, uh, Pennsylvania to like Connecticut. And, uh, we wanted to do something in New York. So we were originally going to have it at a campsite and do like a drunken steak and Warhammer weekend with, uh, cabins and stuff like that. Um, but then Warhammer fantasy disappeared and everybody got really salty. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was one of those people. Yeah. I was heavy in eighth edition. I had multiple thousand, 3000 point armies and then age of Sigmar just killed it. And I stopped playing. So I'm with yeah, you. We, we <laughs> yeah. all did too. We yeah. all did too. We floated around. Uh, we tried briefly Kings of war, uh, but mm. that really had no soul. And, uh, then we played X-wing, um, for a while and then they uh they did second edition x-wing and we were still remembering what what happened with warhammer fantasy and just noped out of that too (laughs) we're like oh wait you want me to buy 200 dollars worth of cardboard to play with ships i already have nope uh you know thinking about it now if somebody had simply said to us this is no different than buying a new army book we would have gone oh yeah no shit right it is and probably kept playing but we didn't we noped out of that (laughs) uh and then we dirtled around and did a bunch of nothing uh, for a little while and then legion came out and uh chris probably went to japan for a year uh <laughs> and so we sort of had legion armies painted and started playing a little bit but right at the beginning chris disappeared so i kind of just did nothing but paint for a year and uh <laughs> then he came back and we started playing and we realized that this is this really is a good game this is the game we should be playing yeah. uh, and sort of picked up our plans for uh, the camp hammer gt where we left off uh the campsite we were going to run it at is no more uh, what's well, still there, but it's owned by some company that's turned it into a, a, a Airbnb conference, uh, something. Or I don't know. They're, yeah, they're not going to yeah. rent to a bunch of drunken war game nerds. So yeah. <laughs> uh, we had to we had to look for a new venue, and uh, I mean, go big or go home, right? Shoot yeah. your shot, shoot or shoot. So we got a big dumb room at Turning Stone, and uh, gonna make it go. Yeah, and so for for anyone who is not familiar with upstate New York or what we're talking about, uh, to Turning Stone is a Native American casino over on the Res. Huge, huge place. Uh, if you ever, if you haven't been there, very reminiscent of Vegas, but in upstate New York. And you know they've got tons of amazing restaurants, tons of 
offices and ballrooms and and you know i'm sure event centers that we're going to be in and they have crazy concerts there it's it's for upstate new york it's a big deal and i know a lot of you are you know if you live in a major city you're going uh so what jay but for 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 upstate new york um it's a big deal and you know they got all the casino trappings that you you could want um so this is i'm really excited about this and you know, when I heard you guys were doing it at Turning Stone Casino, I was I was like, at first when I heard about it, I was like, I don't know. And then it was like Turning Turning Stone. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm in. Like, <laughs> that's that's the place to go for that, for sure. Yeah, it's going to it's going to be nice. Uh, I've worked with them quite a bit for a number of other things over the years. Uh, and uh, to the point where I've had like three different contacts at this point, because people keep moving to other jobs and stuff. But uh, it's they're, they're really easy to work with. Uh, they've been really accommodating should be good yeah yeah so uh yeah so when you guys uh, decided to do this i here's here's a fun question for you guys what did you think was going to be easy about this that turned out being really hard and what did you think was going to be hard about this that turned out being really easy uh i thought that the promotional part of it was going to be real hard uh i um I, I, I didn't, I wasn't even sure where to go. I knew there was a Legion Facebook group and we could put it there. Uh, and there was a sub on Reddit for, for Legion. And that was about the extent of what I knew. I thought there was going to be a whole lot of us, uh, needing to travel around regionally and hit, you know, we play Legion on Thursday night at, you know, Bob's game shack down yeah. in, you know, Bumblebee Doop upstate New York. And we were going to have to like do this nonstop for six months and drum up interest, like, you know, two dudes per store at a time. Yeah. Uh, turns out that uh, Legion Discord is hopping, so I didn't really need to do all that much. That one sort of just <laughs> fell in my hands once everybody, uh, every, once everybody got a got a taste of what we were doing. Actually, LJ, um, I think because when I first mentioned we were going to start doing the run of this tournament and nobody knew who the hell we were, uh, a bunch of the guys in the LTC Discord, the Legion Tournament uh, Coordinator Discord. Uh, which is a, a little small discord. There's maybe 30 of us in there, but it's just like guys who run tournaments and judge tournaments. And uh, they, they put us in there, I think just to laugh at us and watch us burn, <laughs> watch us fail. Um, because we were really, we came in making a lot of noise and really having nothing to back it up. Uh, yeah. And then after we'd been in there a few weeks and like, I was starting to post printers and starting to post progress on terrain. And we had some more information. We got our website up. Uh, I think somebody had a conversation there and Drawd was like, Hey, uh, I thought you guys were full of shit, but it looks like you're actually going to do this. So let me make you a, a channel in the main discord and we can start promoting this thing. Yeah. Once well, that happened like, woo. Hey, I can tell you as someone that was in that group uh, and saw you coming in hot, uh, I think, you know, I think, we've run an event right and we for sure when we started we were like we're going to do this and we're going to do this and everything's going to be awesome and people the same thing were like oh okay good luck with that because once you you know once you start digging into it and finding out what that actually means right it, you're like oh and i think we you know most of us have been there and <laughs> remember your post and you're talking about hey i'm going to do 64 tables of custom or 32 tables of custom terrain and all this stuff and we were like what like we you know we generally all borrow terrain from other people so yeah i was, was a little shocked about that originally yeah. when i saw that post yeah. i'm like uh oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. right cuz it's normally it's how it is right like oh he's they're doing it all, huh? Well, I, I know how that is already because I got uh, Crimson Owl hitting me up to drive 11 hours to Adepticon and bring him 30 tables. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, 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 do yeah, it. yeah, we're bringing tables to Adepticon as, as well. But yeah, I mean, so I think it's funny because <clears throat> I don't know how you guys have how it's worked for you, but I feel like this community is really cool. But like sometimes um, it just takes a little bit to warm up as <laughs> You know, especially when when you're coming in hot. I mean, what has happened to us back when we were trying to change the world too, right? Like you're coming in hot and you're like, oh yeah, we're going to do all this crazy stuff. And I was like, all right. <laughs> well, I, I think it's like the nature of like miniature communities because there's yeah. such like a buy-in with like time and, and money, like painting your miniatures, all of that. Like there's almost like a kind of prove yourself mentality and, yeah. you know, but then once you're accepted, like once you show up, like then you're really embraced and, you know, you instantly become like one of the boys. So 
Yeah, I, I think that's agree. a nice thing about the miniatures community. I would agree with that 100%, you know, and I think once and I and I, you know, from my perspective, uh, that was absolutely my opinion on this whole thing was, you know, I think Dave, it was probably you when you got in there and you were you were going off about what you were going to do for this tournament. I'm like, all right, good luck with that. And then as it grew and you you guys were actually starting to perform and do and you know and build it up and showing that you guys had what it takes to to make it happen, then, you know, I think then that buy-in for me, for sure, that buy-in started to come in and I go, okay, yeah, no, these guys are for real. This is good. Oh, no, it know? was, uh, it was a long, it was a long reach and a heavy lift. Like I didn't, uh, I was just looking back at my Amazon history the other day. And at, at the end of August, I didn't own a 3d printer. I didn't want <laughs> a 3d printer. Yeah. Uh, and by the end of September, I owned four and by the end of October, I owned six. Uh, now mm -hmm. I have six and a, uh, an Elegoo Saturn. I have a resin printer now too. Yeah. Uh, so I've got seven printers out in my shop <laughs> uh, and they have run almost nonstop since the end of August. Like they show up, they get built, they go immediately into production. And the only time they have any downtime is if something breaks, which let's be serious. I have Ender threes. Uh, and it turns out that the only way to keep six, well, four under threes running is to own six. I can't keep <laughs> yeah. six running. Yeah, yeah, uh, right. <laughs> I've got, I've got one that's down right now. So I've almost never had all six running, uh, but I've had five running almost this entire time. Uh, and uh, I mean, they only, they're only idle when I plan something poorly and I'm not home to change a file over uh, or they're down. That's really it. Right. I, uh, you know, I am fortunate in that I work from home and I worked from home before the pandemic started. Yeah. So I have the flex and I, and I work, I, I work in it. I'm very flexible. Uh, so I have the freedom to, you know, get up in the morning, check on my work stuff, walk out in the shop, make sure all the printers are going, scrape things off the plate, start a new file, change over filament, you know, and I can go out and do that two, three, four times a day yeah. if I need to uh, every day. <laughs> Seven since, days a week since Jeez, September. Yeah. Holy smokes! <laughs> yeah, good but word. I mean, we we got it done. Yeah, I don't have to good. print. Yeah, I pr I printed the last. We needed three more pieces of ice themed scatter for uh for one board. That was all that had to be printed after we did the final inventory uh Sunday and Monday. So I printed those. They were done by Tuesday morning, and I don't need to print any more Star Wars Legion terrain. <laughs> Uh, Ever we've again, got some, yeah. we've got some stuff that needs to be painted now. Yeah, uh, I've got a bunch of A wings that have got a, I've got to paint and some tie fighters. But I mean, the, the, our painting is fairly rudimentary for this stuff. I mean, sure. I print it, I prime it. Uh, I have I'm applying wash out of a spray bottle because there's so much of it. I just like squirt the wash all over it, and then we dry brush over that. Maybe we touch little details. It's done. Um, it's terrain. That's all it needs. Yeah, so. I, I agree with that, too. You know, and I think when we so we did the Northeast Open a couple of years ago uh, and we did that at the Syracuse in the, at the fairgrounds. And, uh, you know, we we built some like we had uh, we had a table that was a mm -hmm. Evan's idea. That was a toy table. And so <laughs> I do miss that table. Yeah, that was pretty yeah nice. so Evan, basically, we got these, you know, those 12 by 12 inch by 12 inch pads mm -hmm. and that you put on the floor in like a toddler's room and then basically bought all these like wood toys and, and borrowed Thomas trains from one of my kids and built like a, a kid's toy room table. And yeah, I mean, I, that's, and I think that was part of it. Like, it, it's funny because when you're taking on an undertaking like that, like, and, and you're new to a community, like, we, like you guys said, right? Like we have no idea who you guys are and you're like, I'm going to do 32 tables and I'm printing them all. And it's like, okay. Like, <laughs> So yeah, it I sounds mean, it sounds outlandish and ridiculous, but yeah. like, but man, hey, man, go. congratulations! It's impressive. Yeah, I, I'm impressed. I can't For wait real. to see what you guys have done. I'm looking forward to it. So, what was what was something you thought was going to be real hard? And but then it, I mean, I think you said that with the community. Huh. So, what was something that you thought was going to be a piece of cake, but now has turned out to be a little bit more complicated? Um, man, I can't really think of anything that. I thought it was going to be in that line. Everything was going to be hard. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like I had very realistic goals the whole time. And like, I understood yeah. like the time frame and with all the work that, you know, Hive was doing with all the printing, like, I don't know. I felt like we were just kind of on schedule the whole time. So no, it's good. Uh, That's good. Yeah. But, but yeah, also we, as head judge, I think my hiccups are going to come at the event. 
I was that's going to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we we've both been running events um, of various sorts for a long time. Uh, like I said to somebody else, that my my love language is service. So when when we're doing something, if there's a big group of us, you know, a bunch of friends doing something or whatever, I'm usually the guy who's making the schedules and planning the itinerary and figuring out who's riding with who and where are we going and what are we doing and how long we'll be there and where are we going to stay and what are we going to eat and what are we gonna... i'm that guy so mm. i'm the organizer guy and i we didn't think this was this is about what we expected uh i was real concerned about you know how much terrain do we really need uh because we were coming from warhammer fantasy where it's two hills two buildings two forests you're done two tree bases yeah. that's it Six pieces of terrain on a, on a six foot table, you're finished. Uh, and Legion's just a lot more. Uh, but once once we got going, you know, it was whatever. Just keep it all keep it all running and keep up on the the big thing for me was just not letting it pile up, like not letting all the printed stuff pile up. Get it all on the priming table. Get it all primed. Get it all washed. Then I can set it aside. Yeah. And sometimes I get a little behind on that, and that would be awful. Um, <laughs> but I don't I don't think we expected anything to be miserable hard like no but like um actually i have a i have a kind of to turn it on you guys uh speaking about terrain yeah uh one of the things that we're working on is just like different ideas for our terrain so in warhammer fantasy there was the idea of dangerous terrain so if you move through it there's the potential for you to take wounds um if you guys were to come up to a board and see a sarlacc for example and uh, let's say it like followed the rules for clambering if you moved across it for like ground vehicles and ground troopers you came across that at a tournament how would you feel about that would that be in line with the theme or would that be because it's not in the rule book would that be something that you wouldn't want to see yeah so oh go ahead jay no please evan you haven't talked go ahead all right um so that i swear at one point in the legion rule book i they might have gotten rid of it i don't know there used to be a hazardous terrain rule about like rolling a die i think it was like a white die or red die for lava or something like that um honestly like look there's no worlds inviting the line here, right? This isn't world. So if someone's like, yeah, sorry, like uh, you roll a white die on a six and eats a dude. I'm like, okay, all right. Let's get some bookies in there, right? Like, uh, <laughs> like I, I love that kind of stuff because that's Star Wars, right? Mm-hmm. Like uh, Legion stops being fun when it gets clinical. Like uh, uh, mm-hmm. when it's like, hmm, I've got my five laser lines here. <sighs> triangulate. <laughs> you don't have cover. Like that's, that like, like sucks me right out of it. But when we're like, um, let's put a couple wampas on the board and say, if you get close, you get whomped, you know, like it's, uh, you know, stuff like that. Like I, it'd be interesting. Cause you could do like, uh, cause normally like right when you get to a table at like, uh, um, uh, the first Nova did this and I don't think I've seen it since, um, the table comes with a sheet of paper that says, Hey, this is a wing heavy cover, not traversable. Uh, it kind of like runs down each piece of terrain. And I think it would be funny and and interesting if you snuck a couple like sarlacc pits in and like uh traversable rolled white die on a on a shield guy gets eaten you know something like that like to see if like what the consensus it's, is it's I'm funny you're t- in. it's funny you're saying that because we're right now we're working on the table stand-ups okay uh, yeah. each, each one is not just i mean it's not just a table number we've got you know the table number but we're figuring out which world every table is going to be and they're all different that's cool there's yeah. going to be a little chunk of the wikipedia entry for that world on oh it. that's cool and then the bottom half of the table and our, our sponsors on there, some of the some of the sponsors got their own tables. Uh, and then the bottom half of the page is all the terrain rules. And we're trying to decide how far afield do we want to go on this stuff? Do we want to put stuff like that in or or just, you know, stick to the rules? Yeah, I mean, so you know what I would say? Like, here, here's the perfect way to do it, frankly, is get like for the, your Sarlacc pit example, right? Give it your rules that you want to do with like, hey, you got to roll a red die or whatever, suffer a wound, whatever it is. I don't care. But mm-hmm. then be, put a secondary option on there and be like, hey, if players can agree and they don't want to use this rule, it's just going to be treated as like light cover yeah, or that's, heavy cover. That's, you know what I mean? that's everything. All of the yeah. terrain rules that we're going to put on it aren't canon rules. You don't have to yeah. do that. Right. The, yeah, the, yeah. As long as the two opponents agree on what they're going to do before the game starts, then we don't really care. We're not going to get yeah. in the way of that. We're yeah, not going to yeah. walk over and see you not using our special rules or whatever and go, <laughs> oh, you can't. Like, I don't care. You guys have fun. Did you agree? Okay, play yeah, on. Yeah, yeah I, I think as long as that's your attitude, then yeah, I think it's fine. I think it's fun. And and because at all these tournaments, <clears throat> and Evan and I have been to so many, and you guys have been to a lot of the fantasy ones, right? Mm-hmm. Is like you get, you do have, 
guys like Evan and I who are there to just have fun and we'll play with those rules and have a great time and won't care and just be like, oh yeah, man, that was amazing. Um, but then you are going to have the tryhards too, right? And so if you, as long as you just recognize that I think both of those people exist in the same game. Oh, I, uh, you know? I played many, many years of competitive Magic the Gathering. Oh, oh yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, I, yeah. And, I've, <laughs> and I've played in I've played in 40K Grand Tournaments too, back when Games Workshop ran them. So like, yeah. You get yeah, it. Okay. Get yeah, it. you get it. <laughs> yeah. But, well, the new terrain rules just kind of like naturally occurred because um, like one of the examples was we had like these smelter baths that have like, you know, uh, TIE fighters that are like being melted down in them and stuff. And I'm like, well, I mean, a trooper, it's area terrain, but like a trooper can't go across this. Like, like it shouldn't be difficult. Like that's crazy. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 So yeah I just, mean, they, so uh, there is the precedent of impassable terrain in mm -hmm. Legion. So you could, you could just call it impassable or yeah, why not? Have them suffer some wounds, do a clamber check if they pass through it. I, I like that. That's great. <laughs> Value of force push just gets higher and higher. <laughs> yeah. oh, and the, the 10 point upgrade just keeps working for me into the smelter with you. Like, here we go. Wait, was it was it was that on the Facebook group today? The one dude was like, I always feel bad when I force push my opponent's stuff off the table. Is that a cheesy move? <laughs> and everybody's like, actually, it's just illegal. So yeah. maybe don't do that anymore. Oh my uh, God. <laughs> Go ahead. That's how Jay and I met. Yeah, that's how Jay and I met. Actually, <laughs> uh, it was a. This was back in the Wild West of Legion when it was like, I think Wave Three was out. Maybe it was like Snow Troopers and Fleets were the new unit, and uh, of Years and Leia. Yeah. And uh, so Force Push. No one really knew what to do, so he walked up to my Veers and just Force pushed them off the table. And I'm like, you, you, you can't. I mean, I guess so. We had the rule book open, like it doesn't say you can't, right? So it's like, uh, I guess he just retreats. It's like, uh, so yeah, that's a. Uh, it's it's funny because that's a. That's why that actually came up again because back then that was like a thing to do because nobody knew any better. I don't even know if there was yeah. like a Discord at the time. It was just like, uh, so the same thing with like uh, uh, that. I think it was like the next tournament we played. Uh, uh, we like Boba Fett like got to Leia. Leia just walked off the board. And I'm like. I guess you can. Yeah, he doesn't say you <laughs> yeah. can't, right? It's like, yeah, okay, I guess she doesn't get the bounty. She just gets in her space car and takes off. So, yeah, there's a, those, a lot of those, like, it's funny seeing, hearing those 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 uh, stories of, like, new players doing stuff like that because it's, like, we've all been there. And uh, especially back when there was no, like, support besides the book that came in the box. It was just whatever you interpreted, like, yeah. <laughs> whatever you're, whatever you felt. So, so Chris, Dave's been working on the train. He's, I saw the picture. He's got his whole family working on it and extended family, probably some neighbors. Probably, he's got all kinds of people working on terrain. Yeah. Now you're the judge. So you've been studying this whole time, right? Like you've got yeah. the RRG memorized. Is that what I heard you say? <laughs> Ooh, I mean, <laughs> as close as I can, man. Um, yeah. yeah. I've just been trying to like grind games and like see as many weird scenarios as I can. Um, you know, scouring the Discord rules, the uh, the AMG forum, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm trying to be as prepared as I can, but uh, you know, I mean, it's one of those things where I feel like no matter how much you prepare, some scenario is going to occur, and it's going to be like, well, yeah. all right, time yep. to give my best shot, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, and but, I mean, um, you know, we've seen uh, Brendan, uh, Crimson Owl, Dave, and you know, it, Brendan has been the head judge for tons of the big AM, AMG FFG tournaments. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's stuff he literally still had, he'll print out the RG, have it with him. <laughs> and like, there's still stuff that stumps him, and he's been to tons of tournaments. So I'm sure. But, you know, I think from a player's perspective, uh, you know, I'm talking to the audience now, uh, is that, you know, you guys just got to understand that the judge is doing the best they can with the information that they have. And, you know, I think you just call a judge if you have a question and they'll make a determination. And then that's there you go. That's that's what you got. When you by. say call a judge, we want to mm -hmm. make sure that everyone understands that you should have first tried to figure this out on your own. <laughs> and then you should have gone ahead and looked up the relevant rules and had them right there in hand. <laughs> yeah. Then you may call the judge. We've yeah, only yeah. got one judge, and there's 64 players, we hope. Well, uh, shameless plug, uh, we have an app called Legion Quick Guide, which is the entire RRG in a very nice uh, 
quick guide for you. <laughs> so you could get that and that'll be, that'll, you could go by that. So please use it and don't yeah. ask me rules questions. That's yeah. the other thing. <laughs> Just because I'm behind the table with the fancy shirt on does not mean I know anything about this game. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> but also, and you, and you, you're making the terrain, you said? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm good at that part. Yeah, I'm, a hobby, I'm a hobby hero, man. But I'm a zero. <laughs> oh, man. But like they've said, we've ran like a lot of events. So, I mean, yeah. at, at the end of the day, like making sure that everyone has a good time is like our main concern. And I think like that's what we've done. Like, I mean, we have guys coming from like, uh, you know, the 501st. Like we're going to have um, another like LARP group that does like the Starfall Academy thing that is like, you know, Star Wars related showing up uh, to like promote their thing. Um, you know, we have like, I think we have like, what, like 16 sponsors at this point. Like we, we have a wheelbarrow of prizes that we need to give away to yep. all of the players. Um, and there won't be repeats. So like if, you know, separatist wins first, they can't take, you know, best separatist. So uh, there'll be a ton of stuff to give away, including a bunch of stuff from fifth trooper that they very generously what, donated. Recently. Who are those jerks? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, who else? So just games out of Rochester. That's our favorite store. I know. Oh, that please they... let us, uh, let us run yeah. down our list. Please. Because we <laughs> promised our sponsors. We shout them out. So we've yeah, got yeah, yeah. Uh, in, in order of people coming on board, we've got Jupiter games. Uh, nice. from down in uh no see I, I forgot one already why is he on here uh oh they're out of order all right we're just Jupiter's gonna go on the order star. of the list then. we got jupiter games down in vestal the binghamton area they're great uh we got serenity hobbies from yep, norwich so new york yep. uh they gave us two limited edition lukes oh damn all right yeah sweet uh we've got flipside gaming uh they're nice. in for a bunch we've got zombie planet out in rochester yeah uh they okay yep, Chris a pile of stuff uh, we got both Just Games and Millennium from also the Rochester good. area. Those guys are both great. Yeah, uh, they hooked us up. Uh, we've got the uh, the Wargaming After Dark podcast. Some friends of ours had us on for an episode. Uh, they all dipped into their uh, their piles of shame and gave us a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, we've got Imperial Terrain, uh, ZGM Armory. Both of those guys gave me. Uh, they both gave me some gift certificates for the winners, uh, and uh, I've printed a ton of stuff from Imperial Terrain for the tables. Uh, ZZM Armory too. Uh, ZZM Armory does the best Starship minis uh, in in the world right now. If you're printing Starships, I say, this stuff is I all. Have a, oh, I have yeah. a oh, damn. Tie Defender yeah. right here. Yeah. His stuff all prints with no supports on an FDM printer. It's awesome. Wow. Uh, okay, really that's actually stuff. pretty. That's pretty big. Yeah. The, yeah. High advance. It's really great stuff. Oh, nice. Uh, Those are look good to scale too. He's he's essentially given me anything I've asked for, not made me buy it, uh, and he's also done some custom stuff for us. We've got a. Uh, a Coruscant underworld table. Nice. It's got like a used speeder lot and a, <laughs> a building with a sign on it. that says girls, girls, girls in Orabesh. Like nice. that's all, that's all him. He hooked us up with a bunch of custom, custom stuff. Uh, we got you guys hooking us up with a bunch of alt art cards and stuff. Um, oh no, that's a, uh, that's a, uh, oh, no, sorry. Not, cards. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Cami's cards hooked us up and, with some alt art stuff. And uh Legion 99. They got us and those, Legion uh, Yoda too. and Kraken full art cards. Yep. Yep. Nice. Uh, Unplugged Gaming out in Fayetteville, New York, near Syracuse. Mm -hmm. uh, they're a brand Sweet. new store. Like yep. we walked in there three weeks after they opened, and they sent us out with a core set and a pile of other stuff. Oh, that's so nice. They were really great. Yeah. Um, that's it. I miss anybody. I think that's everybody, right? And uh, now, uh, Jay, if you want to talk about all the stuff that Fifth Troopers doing, uh, I don't. I don't yeah. remember what it is. <laughs> <laughs> this is the third time. So D Chris and I have been going back and forth, and we talked like on the phone a couple weeks ago. I was like, "Yeah, man, uh, I don't know this, that." Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, right, "Remind me in a week or two. And, and then he goes, "Hey, you're still on for sponsorship?" I go, "Yeah, what did I talk about?" <laughs> so. I was like, yeah, whatever, whatever I said, we're still good for that. But yeah, I think we're doing, what did I say, Chris? We're Oh, oh, uh, we're going to do silhouettes, right? For mm -hmm. all the players. Mm -hmm. We're going to do um, red and blue side, our red and blue sidebars and a six by four mat of my choosing uh, for the winner. Mm -hmm. uh, red and blue sidebars for last place. And then uh, we have four factions sidebars that we designed and we're going to do those for top and faction. Sweet. Awesome. Awesome. Very yeah, we've got uh we got a bunch of trophy plaques made up for uh for winners. I got the yeah, winners ones those. for second and third, uh, and I've got the ones for the best faction ones. I've still got to work out. We're doing a bunch of other prizes. Uh, I haven't done these ones yet, but I'm gonna get to it. I swear to God, I'm gonna make these next few weeks. We got to do one for uh, uh, we're doing uh, where's the list? We're doing yeah, champion uh, second third. We're doing yep. uh, best painted. We've got a rubric for that. Event staff's going to go through that. Uh, actually, uh, Wrench, the guy in charge of ZZM, is coming out here from Chicago to help me judge painting. 
Oh, oh that's cool. Yeah. He's not even going to play. He's just going to hang out. He's like, I awesome. want a bunch of pictures of my stuff on your tables. I'm like, all right, <laughs> come on. Yeah. Uh, we're going to do best sportsmanship. Uh, that's going to be voted on by opponents. Uh, we're going to do rolling thunder. So the best record with the most points on vehicles. Uh, and then we're going to do uh, a high, best Highlander list. Uh, there can only be one trophy for that. So <laughs> best, best Highlander list. Sweet. We'll do that one too. Uh, I really want to know what's going to take that. I think that's going to be the most interesting. I, it could be nobody. It could be nobody even if he tries it. So who knows? I didn't even know it was happening. Evan and I have played a little Highlander ourselves. So we uh, we might be able to bring that one home for you, boys. Our, uh, <laughs> our, our website under Highlander list actually links to you guys, your article on it. So yeah. <laughs> I noticed that, could, yeah. You could go two and four and get a prize. I yeah. mean, yeah, right. yeah, that's true. I should also mention too, because it gives some people anxiety that uh, the painting contest, the best painted trophy is opt in. We're going to ask yeah. your registration. If you want to take part in this and if you don't, it's fine. Uh, you can, you can opt into this. If you haven't opted in, we're not going to judge your painting. So, oh, nice. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The, I think event, that's good. We've requested, yeah. uh, we've requested fully painted models, mm -hmm. but everybody does that. Uh, what we're really looking for is, you know, the three color standard, but the truth is that we can't even really force that. If you show up with bare plastic models, you're going to get a hard warning. Uh, and as long as you're not a complete douche nozzle, you're not going to get any <laughs> other warnings. So you can yeah. play with a hard warning with unpainted gray dudes and still do fine. So we wanted to give something to the best painted people, the people who, who were really hobbying up the hobby game. So, yeah, I like that. I think that's, that's good. Right. Because uh, I, sometimes that paint, requirement though uh, seasoned war gamers like ourselves are like oh yeah yeah that's normal you know i think a lot of people get really stressed out about that so i, I like that approach to it you know where hey we we want the three color minimum but you know yeah. if if you can't we get it so. if you can't pull it off it's fine if you don't yeah. want to be judged that's fine we've got a rubric for the judging it's very extensive it's not just going to be people looking at your stuff and picking who they like the best like they've got to go down the list uh, and, and give you scores for a whole bunch of subcategories. So it'll be as objective as we can make a subjective thing like best painted. So, but I've still got to come up with trophies for painting sportsmanship, rolling thunder and Highlander. Um, I just, what did I, Oh, for the Highlander one, I just picked up an STL of a uh, Mando's Mando's blaster. So I'm going to oh, put on a blaster. Sweet. Oh yeah. That's nice. Yeah, that's sweet. In, like I'll put that, I'll put that like it's just a gold PLA and like yeah. not even paint it. I'll just slap that. In gold. Yeah, no, that's, that's sweet, dude. That's awesome. Yeah. And, I wrote, Rolling Thunder, I'll probably just paint a vehicle. I'll grab a tank or something and paint yeah. that thing gold and stick it on there. You, I Best think band, those, I'll probably get a brush and... those are going to be some of the favorites. You know, when we did the Northeast Open, we did one called Jankiest List. And it was just who brought like the most crazy list that, you know, had no business winning, but they brought it. It's kind of like your Highlander one. And uh, basically, I just took a trophy and I took a T-47 before they were good. Uh, and I just spray painted it gold and glued it to the top of it. It was like, there you go. Jankiest yeah. list. Uh, yeah, but some yeah, of these are gonna some of these are gonna come with good prizes though. I mean, all these things are gonna come with a mountain of prizes because we have a mountain of prizes to give out. That's awesome. I mean, it's all gonna. I mean, I've got a set of Windsor and Newton Series Seven brushes for best painted and my little oh. personal contribution. So oh, like, dang. You know, all right. if you're if you're into painting, like you know you know what those are. So yeah, I did a big deal. Yeah, no, <laughs> you did not. Well, Chris, you fired. <laughs> you're out. I'm, no, I'm new afterwards. to this hobby need, thing, man. I need him to judge. He can't be <laughs> yeah. fired yet. <laughs> Well, this is, yeah, so um, this is really exciting. I'm really, uh, really happy about this. And so it's two days. So let's talk about the kind of the tournament structure. So two days, Saturday, Sunday, uh, how many rounds is it going to be per day? It's going to be three rounds a day, no cut, because okay. with six rounds and 64 players, we can get the one undefeated guy. Cool. So we're going to yeah. go six rounds, no cut, three on Saturday, three on Sunday. Nice. Nice. And yeah. uh, we decided we we're going to do a uh, strength of schedule as our uh, tiebreaker. Um, yep. Because with, um, with MOV, we just felt like um, there's just like too many opportunities. Yeah. There's just yeah. too many opportunities for too many problems. Like, you know, if somebody decides to scoop, you know, and picks up, it's like, all right, what does that mean? Like how many points is that? Yeah. Or, yeah, you know, yeah. if, uh, you know, somebody's at the top table with their friend and it's, you know, last round, it's like, yeah, I mean, do I just you know, pull? Yeah, yeah, like, right, if, exactly. You, would you play? You won the like. You're not. It's colluding, uh -huh. but also like, you're like, oh man, I don't really care. We play each other all the time, dude. Like, yeah, you know, I, I, am, I get it. I'm steeped in decades of competitive Magic: The Gathering play and watching, Ooh. you know, 
day one, nine rounds at a, at a Grand Prix and everybody who goes seven and oh intentionally draws twice in rounds eight, and nine to get to the second day. Like that's, that's yeah. real common and, and expected. And I, we don't want it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, that's, you know, that uh, we I had a conversation with uh, one of our locals a while ago about, and it came up in MCP because we were doing um, margin of victory. And the guy was just like, he got like almost tabled and like turn three. And he's just like, I just want to scoop. I don't, I'm good. You won. <laughs> and the other guy's like, well, if you do that, you screw me because I need those points. And then uh, like, I could have said, I'm like, oh man, like it's, he wants to scoop. I'm scoop. Like, don't like hold this guy hostage. You know, he's just like, I, I have nothing to even play. I'm just watching you play for three turns. So it's a, it's, it's a weird line and it's interesting you brought it up. But I, I like that you took a, you actually had thought like you had, the we, had a, we had a whole discussion that. about it. And yeah. one of the other things we discussed was that it, it's going to encourage people uh, you know, Luke Cook plays some kid up from Norwich who's playing his first tournament. Luke's a good guy, but because we're doing margin of victory, Luke is uh, he, he's incentivized to yeah. stomp a mud hole in this kid's chest. Yeah. Yeah, right. Just, that, to, uh, just to pile up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like if, uh, to, to really like... That's you know, exactly something Luke Cook would do. Do <laughs> <laughs> that guy. But I mean, it, it's going to, especially in the first and second rounds, yeah. where, you know, you're not going to know as many people and everybody's going to be playing yeah. anybody. Like, you're going to get some new guy who's played, you know, five games and he's matched up against somebody who, who has been out to Adepticon and LVO. And, you know, and, and it's going to be in this guy's advantage to stomp a mud hole in this noob's chest. Yeah. And it's going to be feel bads. And we don't want that. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to no, really the schedule. Good. Yeah. I think that's great. Right. I think SOS is good, for, yeah. especially for a, you know, a fun for this is this is a fun tournament. This is nothing's on the line. Well, you know. They're all fun tournaments. I mean, nobody's, well, nobody's playing for thousands of dollars cash. There's, also true, there's, yeah. there's no <laughs> national circuit. Yeah, nobody's yeah. going to win a trip to uh, you know, it's, it's all for fun at this yeah. point. Uh, yeah. Right now. <laughs> right now. Uh, yeah. It's back, all for fun. Back when world's tickets were on the line, it was a little yes. different, but no, yeah, we're, yeah, yeah. We're yeah. familiar because Warhammer yeah. had similar things. And yeah. like, you know, I, like I said, I've played a lot of magic. So there's always, you know, there's oh, always the a money. pro tour invite or something yeah. online and oh that like i it's cool that you can make a career playing magic like you can get that good where you you win a tournament and you get paid but like money does weird things to games when yeah. they when they become like a prize pool especially for like yes. games and stuff like that right just kind of I'm, I'm more than happy just to be like nah man not no they just make prizes and that way there's no like weird like shenanigans or like you know anything there's happening. all kinds of weirdness in magic with like how yeah. much collusion can happen and yeah. you can say this but you can't say this and there's ways for like your opponent to ask you a leading question and then when you <laughs> answer the question he goes judge yeah this guy yeah. just asked me if i wanted to scoop for money you know and yeah. then you get disqualified and the and the hard truth of it is that all the pros have already colluded in their hotel rooms the night before. They yeah, all know yeah. what they're going to do in which situation, who's going to split, who's not, who's going to draw, and who's not. So if you're not part of that inner circle, you're at a huge disadvantage anyway. So yeah, right. I avoid all that. No, that's smart. Like I'm, I'm the uh, getting to talk to you now has made me like really jazz for this. I was already jazzed, I already bought in because it was in Turning Stone. Like, look, I went to ACO, uh, the Legion 99 guys ran a great event, but that venue was butts. It was just like uh, like thirty dollars to interact with any <laughs> vendor. Uh, I wanted an energy drink and a bag of Swedish fish. It was like eighteen fifty. I'm like, okay, I I'm held hostage here, right? And like, yeah. uh, Turning Stone uh, isn't that right? Like it's Turning it's, Stone's got this uh, got this food court now, yeah. Where you can like you can roll over there with fifteen bucks and you can get a burrito or a cheeseburger or pizza or fried chicken or Chinese food or a million things. It's great. It's still mm -hmm. upstate New York. Nobody's yeah. paying eight dollars for a yeah. soda up here. Uh, yeah, so oh, talking like about soda, spot. Turning Stone, you just go get free soda. It's on the floor. <laughs> it's all free. <laughs> uh, we actually, as part of our room charge, have paid for beverage service. Oh, uh, nice. Uh, so there will be at least coffee and water available the whole weekend. Oh, that's great. But in the bingo hall, there is free soda. So, yeah. yep. Oh, so <laughs> beware. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's my dream of having a cigar while I'm playing Legion is almost there. If it wasn't for this pesky pandemic, we yep. were almost there, you know, almost. <laughs> I I think if you sit down at a table, you are allowed to smoke because there's a smoking section in Turning Stone. So, yep. I mean, you you can get pretty close. You can at least play table <laughs> games and smoke. I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just want to like, just be that true degenerate. Just take my like, 
let's kind of like push my uh, Yoda forward. Be like, yeah, he's moving up. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care. I got a, I got three of these things. Like, <laughs> the, the trick here is going to be for us to play our cards right and get the uh, get the cocktail waitresses coming in to where we're playing. We're oh. not that far off the gaming hall. So we if go. we get them to come in a couple times and they figure out there's tips to be made there, they'll start coming in. Yeah. Oh. Good, then you can get plan. all kinds of drinks and food and whatever you want, Evan. Yes. Yeah, good plan. Hey, all right. <laughs> <laughs> when hey, I'm at the bottom I, tables, I'll just drink my sorrows. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'd like to make a recommendation to any players coming to play. When you introduce yourselves to any of us, anyone who you've talked to online, could you please use your real name and your Discord handle at the same time? <laughs> because my favorite thing at these events is somebody will be like, oh, I'm a... Uh, Baron Zemo the fifth on Discord, and I'm like, okay. And then he's like, and then they'll be like, oh, I'm Chris. I'm like, oh yeah, we talk on Facebook all the time. You know, I mean, it's or it's the opposite. Oh hey, hey man, I'm Chris. I'm like, yeah, I don't know you. We talk all the time. I'm like, we do. <laughs> like, yeah, on Discord. We remember we were direct messaging yesterday. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, this is this is gonna be fun. I'm really excited about this. So, uh, what are you guys the most excited about for the event? our shirts that's what i'm the most excited about yeah. the shirts are showing up tomorrow we got black and gold bowling shirts oh damn all right with uh with canto Boy cup staff on the back <laughs> in the front with our little uh, our little logo of two sabak chips and uh and uh uh the imperial little credit. credit yeah an imperial credit thing on it it's gonna be they're, they're so pimp i can't wait uh-huh. oh damn okay damn all right i'm I'm Uh, excited about that now too all right (laughs) i mean the thing that i'm the most stoked for is like one of my favorite memories about like warhammer fantasy is just like i mean guys would be like buying each other beers at the table and stuff and just like hanging out and there's like a feeling of like real camaraderie in those types of communities and that was honestly the thing that drove me to go to these events the most so we kind of want to emulate that the most with legion which is why like we're also allowing like proxies like you know like somebody wants to do like a bo katan instead of uh sabine and i'm like yeah like why not? I mean, as long as it looks different, I mean, everyone recognizes that model, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, that's the thing. We're just, we're looking to make a fun environment and that's, that's really just, I don't know, our goal. Yeah. Yeah, And and I think with, you know, the way Legion is with silhouettes now, any of the like trooper units, you can, you can sub out for whatever you want, right? As long as you're like, yeah, here's the silhouette and I can recognize that. And you say, Hey, this is bo sitting in for Sabine. Then yeah, we're, we're good. Right. And uh, and just for clarity, another one of the things that we've seen talked about now a lot in like uh, some of the Legion circles is like uh, spider droids. Like, where do you draw a line of sight from? Um, and it, it, it is the top of the model is my understanding. So that is also how we'll be playing that type of thing. So like, um, you know, because people have asked, like, you know, if they can have like custom ATSDs and stuff. And I, I mean, the rule is like, yeah, I mean, as long as it makes sense, like mm. as long as one foot isn't pointed straight up in the air and you're like, I'm going to measure from the top of the ATSD foot. Like, no, nah, it's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. You know, if it's like a, like a, you know, one of the buses what? on its side, like, you know, yeah, that's what Tokyo I do. Drifting <laughs> totally fine. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. yeah, I don't know. It's just, uh, yeah, it, it's very interesting though, with the way line of sight and vehicle profiles work, like what yeah. goes and what doesn't. They're going to have to come up with a volumetric, uh, template for everything uh, a silhouette yeah one for yeah. each size base there's no way they can't the, the spider droid thing is just the last line of things that's really hitting at home i mean i i myself built an atsd that's like crouched down a little bit you know yeah. i i give up a little bit of advantage but i get a little bit of advantage too but you know if there was just a volumetric silhouette for that then it wouldn't make any damn difference there's turns out when uh, other games do it first like infinity and they're like, hey, this is the robot silhouette. This is the little guy silhouette. This is this guy silhouette. Like it, they did it for a reason, right? It's because it's just like, all right, do what you want with the model. If you got to measure, put this thing down or like make just real. You make a good point with the vehicles because just kind of like whatever you feel like sometimes. Or this or, weird yeah. between state right now where it's it's squared away for small bases, but all the big bases are like, you what? Like we had a yeah. guy who wants to play. He has Wookiees on his tauntauns. And oh, that guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they're noticeably taller, right? Yeah, yeah. They're noticeably taller. And we were like, you know, we don't care. Go ahead yeah. and do it. But yeah. if there was a silhouette, it would solve that whole problem. Yeah. yeah and yeah. that's the thing. They're clearly not modeled for advantage. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so it's like, yeah, why would we not allow this? Like, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, plus, I mean, anytime you can put a Wookiee on something, I mean, let's oh. do it. Right. Like, hey, man, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's good. 
Well, that's man, this is sounding great. I'm I'm really excited about this. Uh, you know, as the boys said here earlier on the podcast, seats are filling up. So if you're in the Northeast area and you want to come out to a great tournament, we, you know, like I said, Evan and I are going to be there. Let's see, Bushman, Bushfax is dry, is coming up from mm -hmm. from our podcast as well. And uh, you know, we know a bunch of people that are coming from from I think some of the guys from Albany are coming. Some of the guys from uh, Rochester and Buffalo are coming. And I think we got guys flying in from Miami. It's, it's crazy. So we've got, there's all kinds of people coming. So come, you know, sign up, come have a good time. It sounds like it's going to be a blast. And uh, yeah, we're, we're all going to be there. All four of us are going to yep. be there. I, th I think it's going to be a real good time. <laughs> uh, don't, don't be scared of the winter. Uh, it's <laughs> yes, it's winter. Uh, it happens every year up here. We all live in it year round. We don't all leave when the snow starts. Yeah. Uh, I assure you that unless we are in the midst of a of a serious snow incident, like like multiple inches per hour coming down, like all you got to do to get here from like the Syracuse airport is five minutes on Route 81 and 30 minutes on on Interstate 90. Like it's all yeah. on interstates. So those roads are clear unless it's snowing multiple inches per hour. Yeah. Don't yeah. don't worry about it too much. I mean, yeah. you might have to go. 50 instead of 80 whatever you know you'll still get here well yeah. within an hour Come i encourage out. anyone from the south if you're not familiar with cold bring a jacket friend because that you're oh, for yeah. sure gonna want uh some of the guys from miami were busting my you know, and uh, we're saying they were going to come stay here at the house. And I said, OK. And I was sending them pictures of the temperatures recently up here. going, But you're sleeping out in the garage and it's like negative five. <laughs> yeah, you're going to you're going to want to find some socks and yeah. put on your big coat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we uh, we do, in fact, have all four seasons, though, up here in New York. It's nice. We have yeah. uh, almost winter, winter, still winter and construction every year. <laughs> <Yeah>. All four. <laughs> Construction lasts longer every year, it feels like. I don't know. Global warming. But, but once you get to the turning stone, you won't have to leave. I mean, they have a general store that has Gatorade and beef jerky. You can yep. you can practically live there with all the restaurants. So, that you know. is, yeah, yeah, Chris, is that your requirements for living? <laughs> is Gatorade yes. and beef jerky? Well, that's for the hangover. Because, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the alcohol is a given. So, you know. Yeah, yeah. And given and again, given our experience with war gamers, if Legion players are anything like Warhammer players, then drinking, then, you know, it's uh, it's what? Oh, you've, yeah. Uh, it's a fighting game with a, with drinking, a drinking problem. problem. I don't know. Yes. Something yeah, like yeah. That. It's a drinking game with a fighting problem. Yes. Oh yeah. And some of some of my chat groups guys are already talking about coming up Friday night to play poker all night. So yeah, do it. It's uh, it's yeah. gonna be a good time. There's a uh, there's a lot of food. I mean, you can you can stay there almost a week and eat three meals a day and not eat at the same place twice. Just about. Yeah. Um, if you're having problems like convincing your wife to let you go, just bring her. They've got two day spas uh, that have everything under the sun. She can get her hair done. She can get her nails did. She can get a hot rock massage. She can get a mani-pedi. Like, she can do all that stuff. Uh, and then go shopping. So, like, bring the yeah. wife. Turn her loose. <laughs> I agree with everything. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hey, Dave, Chris, thank you guys for coming on. We really appreciate it. We're looking forward to a great tournament. It sounds like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back and say again, I had my doubts in the beginning, but uh, you've converted me and I'm feeling good about it. And I put my money where my mouth is and we're going to be there and we're going to be playing and we're excited to be part of this and helping you guys out with the sponsorship and and coming and playing. It's going to be it's going to be amazing. So. Awesome. Thanks for the vote of confidence. We were, uh, I was real nervous <laughs> right up till about a week ago. Uh, I was, I was still losing sleep. Like I was waking up in the morning and not being able to go back to sleep. Like, I don't know if we have enough. Just like and yelling like, terrain at two o'clock in the morning. Ah, yeah, pretty much. It might have run. I don't know if number three ran out or not. I gotta go. <laughs> but like, man, last weekend we got together and we laid everything out. And, uh, I think it's all Gucci. We got a little, a uh, little list of hanging chads to snip still, but none of that's, uh, anything we can't get done in the next few weeks. So we're going to bang out these last couple of things and uh, it's going to be great. Fantastic. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in a couple of weeks and uh, Hey, everybody listening, sign up. There's still seats left. Let's get them full. I want a full tournament when I get there. So let's do this. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Dude. Join us next week for another edition of the fifth trooper podcast. This has been a fifth trooper.